Man, hey everybody, we decided to make a little supplemental video here about the corona mass ejection strike. As the initial strike was a bit on the unimpressive side. Here's an image of the latest uh, activity on the sun here in 193 angstroms. Uh, the coronal hole wind stream was not particularly strong and the initial coronal mass ejection strike also not particularly strong, although we did get into geomagnetic unrest conditions. And there you can see the KP index made it up to 4. Uh, NOAA has forecasted a KP of 7. I'm a little bit skeptical about that. I think it's going to be more like a KP of 6, maybe only 5 at this rate. Here's the initial data. And the KP index is a measurement of global geomagnetism. So here we can see the corona mass ejection strike I'm going to reduce the uh, I'm going to reduce this to six hours and so you can see this here's the initial signature here making it up to about 570 uh, kilometers per second there and just about 20 protons per cubic centimeter in terms of density and we've captured the coronal mass ejection strike here in the geospace magnetosphere movies so first, here's the velocity. You can see that uptick in velocity there. And you can also see it in the density. On this second pane here, there's the density. Keep in mind, this shows low density in light colors and high density in blue colors. There you can see that density spike, which came in around two o'clock universal time and I'll let that set I'll let that density magnetosphere movie play through a second time this is the geospace magnetosphere movies and this run shows you four hours of data I wanted to make a video here showing the initial strike there it is about about 20 after 2 universal time it looks like is when the coronal mass ejection showed up so again, we are in geomagnetic unrest conditions. We are expecting more significant auroras in the southern hemisphere than the northern hemisphere, and that has to do with the same axial tilt that makes it spring in the southern hemisphere and fall in the northern hemisphere. And we are nearly at the solstice, so we are nearly at the maximum axial tilt here. So again, we're expecting more significant auroras in the southern hemisphere than the northern hemisphere. No real surprise there. I'll let the pressure movie play through a second time here. And then I'll show you a couple more data points. And this is just a supplemental space weather video. Make sure you join us tomorrow morning for the daily space weather. And here's the geospace magnetosphere movie for ground perturbations and we'll show you the polar view as well as the synoptic view the full planet view so there's the polar view again not that hard of a strike not that high of a velocity and not that high of a density so a bit unimpressive so far we'll see if there are any upticks or anything like that on the regular daily space weather videos. And here you'll see right around 20 after 2 universal time that strike kicking up and you can see perturbations there over both North Poles, both the Canadian and Siberian Pole. And it's giving you a good indication of where the South Pole is located there someplace south of Australia. Here is the auroral forecast and you'll see the auroras kick up there you can also see here an indication of how the South Geomagnetic Pole is very far away from the South Geographic Pole. Keep in mind this is all model based. So I know there were some people on Facebook and so on uh, expecting to see auroras as far south as Tennessee, uh, with which I disagreed immediately. Not expecting to see auroras anywhere near that far south. In fact, at this rate, you'll be lucky if you can see them very far south of the Canadian border. I'll let this play through a second time for all of you Aurora watchers.
northern Alaska will see some auroras there. So if you're if you're up there drilling oil, perhaps you'll see some auroras up there in northern Alaska. And we actually do see a solar flare kicking off here. It looks like it's only a B-class solar flare happening as we made the video. And the proton flux has already returned back to background levels. So we may not see a particularly powerful storm here, although the main portion of the storm was forecasted for a little bit later than this. Here's the Enlil forecast. So there you can see that. Uh, NOAA forecasted this to arrive a little bit earlier than it did. And they forecasted a much higher density and velocity that we've seen at least so far. So this is the coronal hull. High-speed wind expected. So there may be some interaction here between the coronal mass ejection and the coronal hull wind stream. But that's the forecast there. And this shows you the coronal mass ejection, which happened around... I believe it was around 1630 Universal Time on the 7th. So again, here's the, uh, the strike of that coronal mass ejection as expressed on the geospace magnetosphere movies. And this is the space weather modeling framework that determines this model. We'll show that again. And again, we'll do a more in-depth video about the daily space weather tomorrow morning, as we always do. And there's that coronal mass ejection strike, which has sparked geomagnetic unrest. And we'll be watching it to see if it makes it into full geomagnetic storm conditions. I've been your host, Dan, a.k.a. smash o -Mash. And thanks for tuning in to the Smash News Network. And we'll close things out with just today's activity here. In a composite view, it's 94, 193, and 335 angstroms, giving you that lovely uh, purple color. Thanks again for tuning in to the Smash News Network, least busted name in news. Make sure you join us for all your space weather needs.